It's definitely put as like the like benchmark of success. Like when I can quit my job, when I can go full time, I've made it. Don't quit your day job just because you feel pressured by other wedding filmmakers to quit your day job. I don't think you should quit your day job until you can make sure you've cast aside the thought that you're doing it for the wrong reasons. We actually do work. I mean, we might sit down, forget everything we talked about and ramble for an hour, but uh, we do pre-plan some of this. Let me get right in my bed. Uh, why you gonna try to get mad? Uh, everybody wanna keep up. Uh, don't you know I move too fast? Uh, I'ma zip, zip right past. Uh, drip, drip all on my swag. Uh, Hey guys, welcome to the Wedding Film School show. We got an awesome episode today. It's Bobby and I, and we're gonna be talking to you guys about something I think many people don't wanna hear, which is don't quit your day job. So, so Bobby, you know, how long have you been a full-time wedding filmmaker? Um, Well, I, I, you know, maybe what we should start with is how do you define what full-time is? Like, what does that mean to you? I know, I know kind of my personal thing. I think we kind of agree on it too, but. Pretty much, I think for this episode, just so we can have a common definition, um, what we mean by full-time is you quit your other job um, or you're working like 30, 40, 40 hours a week. Like, I, I think you could, I guess you could be full-time in two jobs, but like, you know, you're doing more than just shooting weddings and then, you know, you're kind of like doing the day-to-day, -day. but in general, we mean you quit your other job. And which yeah. is why we called it, don't quit your day job. Because <laughs> we want to talk in this episode about, I think, some reasons why you may not want to go full time in wedding filmmaking. And just, I think it's like this dream a lot of people have, and it's a good dream. And I think it's a, um, almost like a, it's been kind of put in our industry. How many times have you seen this question in a Facebook group? Like, Oh, when should I go full time? And all this, like, it oh, seems yeah. like a big ideal people have. It's definitely put as like the like benchmark of success. Like when I can quit my job, when I can go full time, I've made it like, like yeah, that's yeah. the like end all that's like the paradise though you know pot of gold at the end of the rainbow or whatever and and you know we've both done that we both love that decision but I think yeah today we just want to talk about like hey there are plenty of reasons not to do that well um, and, and in full disclosure Bobby I still have another job oh yeah yeah like, I, I I do not um but you know you asked me how how long I've been uh, full-time you know, I would consider myself full time. I mean, I was basically full time when I was in college, um, but I was also a student and then I got out of college and that was my only job. And then in kind of a weird thing, like I took this job working two days a week in exchange for a pay place to live. Uh, I just had this weird scenario, but it worked out really well and it was just an opportunity I couldn't pass up. And I did Pizza get a delivery. paycheck from that. Oh yeah, pizza delivery, exactly. I lived in the pizza truck, so it was cool. In the kitchen, actually. Cowabunga. Um, no, just this totally random thing, but you know, it was like a, got to live in a place pretty close to the beach, and, and you know, I wasn't gonna complain, so. But you know, I, I would still consider myself full time through that, like I was technically working something else, but all my effort was put into, you know, my business and whatnot, so. Yeah, yeah maybe a way we wanna say it is, full time is when you're, the core of your financial is dependent uh, life is on, dependent on wedding yeah. filmmaking. Like you don't have a, you know, thirty to hundred thousand dollar salary to fall back on. Basically, I think yeah. that's a good way to put it. Yep. Um, yeah. And so going, and so that's why I would consider myself, even though I have another job, I would consider myself full time. Um, I make most of my revenue from wedding filmmaking. Um, I give both jobs a lot of time but i give wedding filmmaking maybe slightly more because it just demands more especially in season especially this yep. freaking crazy year <laughs> but but um but in general like let's talk about some reasons because i want to kind of maybe talk someone off a ledge maybe make somebody feel a little better and also the other thing that i think that isn't talked about a lot is like a lot of people that are trying to go full-time or have gone full-time might be thinking in their head like I don't really have enough work. Like I'm shooting 20 hours a week. I'm just kind of like, I could go do something else. And they maybe don't want to because they don't want to make it look like they're failing or unsuccessful. Yeah. There can be a pride aspect and I don't like that. I don't buy into that personally, but. For many of you guys, being bivocational is actually gonna be the perfect fit. And I want to just set you free that you don't need to feel this pressure to go full time. If you love, like, I don't know, you're a kindergarten teacher, 
you love teaching kindergarten, you want to shoot some weddings, outsource all your edits. You shouldn't have to quit doing something you love. Yeah, I mean, like you can you can find things where like, you know, I, I think let's be real here. Like I, I've done this 15 years, but I don't know, you know, I want to do it for a long time, but you, you always, you don't always know, like, I don't know, what if when I'm 50, like I'm not like you guys running, you know, a variety of teams where I could totally remove myself and I might head that direction as I, you know, get older and whatever, but there might be a point where, you know, I'm not the cool new videographer or what, I mean, I'm not new anymore, but like I don't connect with the demographic anymore and stuff yeah. like that, like there are things that can just happen. And so, you know, I've always been a big fan of too, like, I, I sometimes want, like, I've thought about like, like, so I love making coffee and I'm like, I would love to go work at a coffee shop one day a week or something yeah. where like, it's not what I'm depending on, but if it's something I like want to learn more about and I just don't like, I, you know, and I get honestly, paid a little bit. Yeah. So ninja stuff, right? I technically have worked at the ninja gym that I train at. I don't have a consistent schedule, but I'll fill in for people. Cause I'm like, yeah, I'll go teach a class and make a hundred bucks or something. Like I don't. I mean, it's just kind of fun money. It's, you know, 99.999% of my money comes from weddings, but like, it's something I'm interested in and want to learn more about. I want to teach other people. So yeah, I don't think there's anything bad about working something else. And I think that there is this like negative connotation with it. And I, and I don't think like that's- Like you failed. Yeah, or like you're not quite there yet. And I hate that mindset. I've had that, you know, people kind of put that on me in other aspects of life. And I think it's like the worst thing ever. So, well, let's think about this. Um, what is like a common person who might be um, starting out in wedding filmmaking and like a journey they might have? Like, obviously, most people who start wedding filmmaking have other jobs, right? They're not students. Yep. They're probably people who have other jobs. They decided doing it to on the side on the do weekend. it on the side kind of paint the picture of the typical bivocational person yeah i mean i think like you know somebody is in their career path or just a job right and my guess is they're somebody who is inherently creative and they're just not getting fulfilled like that at work um you know typically what happens is you have some video experience. I I think that, I, I'd be curious to know what you think. I think some people are interested in video. They mess around, make little films at home, whatever, do daily vlogs, whatever it might be. And a friend <laughs> asks them. Oh, come and hey, help I'm out. Exactly, like there, it's either somebody who's like, hey, do you wanna come help me shoot this wedding? Or a friend that's like, hey, I'm getting married. I literally can't afford a videographer. I know but... you have a camera. Exactly, I know you have a camera, I'll give you a, food, I don't know, you know, yeah, yeah. or maybe I'll give you 200 bucks or something like that. So, you know, and what ultimately happens, like what happens with a lot of us, I think this is how we start out is like, you kind of fall in love with it. You know, you yeah. love shooting a wedding and creating a film. And, and even though you create something that's probably hot garbage, like I did for my first film, which you can see on this channel and you can see uh, Jason and Jared's first film too, and our reactions to it. But like, they love it, right? And it's so, you know, you feel, um, it's gratifying to feel like somebody loves what you created. Um, and it Which is very different side. than I think a lot of people's jobs. Oh yeah, like you do not get, you know, commended usually for creativity outside of probably, a, you know, some career. Or even just sure, doing but. your job. Like you can just show up at a wedding oh, yeah. and just do your job. You're not even being that creative. And the yeah. people are going to be like, wow, they're going to give you so much feedback. So I think yeah. a lot of people do enjoy that. And maybe that's like sprinkling that into their life makes their life a lot more fulfilling. And then the other side of it that I think we didn't mention is they realize they can actually make a lot of money. And basically, like, like let's be realistic. Well, you, I want to say, I want to say they, they probably initially do that math wrong. That's Probably. I, I yes. think you don't account for a lot of the costs of doing it. And the expenses, well, the issue is like, if you have another job, it doesn't feel like it costs as much. That's and actually that's a, a good, that's a good point. That's yeah. what we're going to talk about um, later Why you don't want to quit yeah. your day job. But like initially you, to be clear, you can make a lot of money. You can, but, I, but it is, I, I run other business ventures. Wedding filmmaking is very profitable. Yep. Like the cost very to, big margins. The margins are great. And you start realizing like, Oh, I, oh man, I haven't been able to afford to go to the Caribbean in the summer, but now if I just do 10 of these, I can yeah. go to the Caribbean. You look at it in weddings. You're like, oh, 
You know what I really want is, I don't know, an OLED, whatever. A 65-inch yeah. OLED. <laughs> I'm that's like, only one wedding. That's only half a wedding. Yeah. I could do it. Yeah. And so people... Um, the downside is if you want to go to the Caribbean in the summer, you can pay for it now. You just don't have the time. So... Yes. You know what? I go to the Caribbean almost every summer as a wedding filmmaker. Well, good on you. From Monday to Friday. <laughs> yeah, there you go. So, like, I'll leave on a Sunday. And, you, so. and then which day of those five do you shoot a wedding out there? <laughs> I w- You know what? I almost <laughs> never... I've only shot in the Caribbean a couple times. Um... But anyway, I think that's a t- typical person. They fall in love with it. Yeah. Then they start learning about the money. And then they start, I think the natural progression is, wow, I could charge double for this. And I could yeah. book. I could charge $400 for this. <laughs> but it is. It, it's very much seen like fun money. Yeah. Yes. Even, to, I mean, especially at that point. Yeah. If they're getting 2000 got... and they're seeing people charging four or five and they're like, oh, I could do that. I'm as good as them. And so I think that's yeah. when the full time conversation starts to come in their head. Like, oh, I could be making 5,000 times 25. Right. Yeah. Like if, if only I had more time to put into this business. Right. Yeah. And, and, and like, oh, what's holding me back? This job this day job or yeah. like, Oh, don't they don't have the time. They don't appreciate me at my day job. Like I feel like, or just like, I love doing this. I only want to do this. And I think none of those are bad reasons. Like all yeah. of them are perfectly legitimate reasons to want to be a full-time wedding filmmaker. And I think for many of you, you should do that. You should go down that path. You should go full-time. You should quit your day job. But I want to kind of just put a little doubt in your mind so that you're thinking about it the right way. So, so let's talk a little bit about why someone might not, want to actually quit their day job yeah i mean i I think there's lots of reasons i know one of the things that really pops into my mind immediately is like you know i think when you (laughs) when you have that day job you have that security and there is a difference between making two thousand dollars or twelve hundred dollars or four thousand dollars on a wedding when you have a consistent paycheck that you have lived off of up until a certain point um you know when you when you switch over to full time and that is your sole source of income there's a lot that comes along with that a lot of pressures that come along with that and yeah i like it's it just, it has to be a calculated decision. You have to be smart about it. Yeah, I think a person needs to really, really, really think through, um, A, their most, most importantly, their financial situation. Yep. And that's when the math needs to really start happening of like the margin to actually run the business, right? Mm-hmm. Because what you, basically every business needs to be financed. Like that's the thing people don't think of. You're starting a small business, right? Yep. And, and you, when you start your small business, when you have another job, you are your own investor, right? So you're taking the money from your other job and you're investing it in your new venture, Bobby Burns Wedding Film. Mm-hmm. And so Bobby Burns Wedding Filmmaking has profit from his other job and he's dumping it in there. And when maybe the money's lean, say it's November, it's not crazy booking season, you're not shooting a ton of weddings, you need to need a new camera body the, the combination of the money you made in august from your wedding filmmaking plus the money you make in your normal job it all adds up literally yeah. like with my business with wedding filmmaking especially in the northeast i'm sure it's the same way for you maybe people in other countries have different cycles but in the northeast we're, we're very seasonal four seasons right yep. we pretty much don't shoot any weddings from about january to march like yeah which is not I shoot very few in in Minnesota during that time. I'll shoot in California usually. But regardless. Every now and then, adventurous bride and groom. But yeah, but rare. in general, it's almost <laughs> none. People just don't yeah. do it. It's crazy. It's seasonal. And so we make money from new bookings in January yep. and February. March, we make almost no money. Like, basically. Yeah. Maybe we make... A little bit. A little bit yeah. here and there. Handful but in general, bookings, but... our average bookings right now, I think we're booking 10 to 20 a month. We... Who knows next year? Next year could be total crazy. But yeah, in general, yeah. these booking cycles happen, right? Well, right now you have another job. Bobby Burns, pizza delivery guy, has another job full time. He's one of the top in his field at pizza delivery. Fastest and, f- five minutes, yeah, hot and fresh. He's killing it. Or your and, money back. <laughs> and he's and he has this other job. And so 
you have to really think through, can I handle seasonal dips in income? Am I good yep. with, and like, this is a hard discussion, right, Bobby? Because it's a very different lifestyle or not, not even lifestyle, but it, it's a different approach. You have to you don't have get like, a paycheck every two weeks or week or whatever. I don't know. The discussion I had with my, uh, with Jared yesterday about yeah. our own finances, I said, Listen, with your Jared or with our my Jared, Jared. <laughs> my, our Jared, <laughs> okay. in this case, it was my Jared because of the money. <laughs> but I said, Listen, I need three and a half months of payroll saved yeah. in my bank account by the time December hits. Mm. If I don't have that, this is what I have to do and where I have to get the money from. Yeah. Uh, and like those are the discussions you're having that you don't have when you have another job. Yeah. It's and it's just like if you suck with money, you might not want to do it. Like you, Yeah, or like partner up with somebody who doesn't suck with money. Sure. Or change, or get a CPA. I mean, you can change too. Yeah. Yeah, you can, yeah, you there can are work ways, on but or be you can, very honest with yourself. I think is the big a big you, takeaway from that. The first reason you might not want to go is because you don't want to get into, like you don't really want to run a business. You want to yeah. create art. And that's, yeah. I think the first reason, if you in your head, if I start talking to you about spreadsheets, calling people back on time, like if if your yeah. eyes just start Email like- Email sequences, like, well, I mean, so let's roll that into something else, which is, you know, I think you have to do this stuff even if you're- so I think this is kind of a combination thing, right? You have to do a lot of those things, even if you have another job, but your livelihood doesn't depend on it because you get a paycheck, so whatever. Yes. So another good reason, and this kind of rolls into that, to not go full time is, you know, and combined with the fact that that is your sole source of income then, is you have to wear a lot of hats doing this job. And there is so much more to it than creating art. And you know that's what draws most of us in. Most people get into this because they like the creative, the art side. And there are plenty of people who hate the business side or are terrible at the business side and might fail because of it or They'll don't lose, plan for like, it. Lose everything because yeah, they just or can't run a terrible track. business that could be great. You know, I mean, so just acknowledging the amount of roles that you have to play, mm -hmm. and especially in the beginning. I think you can plan from the beginning, if you do it right, to outsource all the stuff you don't want to do. But I think for a lot of people, myself included, in the beginning, and we've kind of talked about this in some aspects like editing and stuff like that, of like, you probably have to, or you probably should play a lot of those roles for some amount of time so that you understand them. Yeah, it becomes emotionally very different when you go full time. And I think the emotional part is what we, I want to get to. I think the, the yeah. another reason you don't want to go full time is you just don't want to pay the emotional and relational price of what it means to have to depend on this money. Going full time is not about shooting more weddings necessarily. It could be, but you, there are people who are part time. Like you can work another job and shoot 20 weddings. Oh yeah. It's going full time is about, a, putting your all and everything into it and getting rid of all yeah. the safety nets. And it's making it so that you are dependent on this money. And I want everyone who's making this decision to think through that part, not think through, do I only want to make wedding filmmaking or do I hate my job? But do I want to depend on wedding filmmaking as my sole source of income and way of life every day I eat, breathe, sleep? Will it destroy my relationship with wedding filmmaking? All that. These are emotional decisions. Because yep. you talked about your Saturday. Think about your Saturdays right now. Like if you're not full time and somebody calls you on a wedding on a Saturday and you want to go to your friend's cookout, what are you going to say? I mean, if, if, wait, so hold you're on. not full time. You are? No. Yeah. Not. Yeah. You're going to be like, you're going to say, yeah, yeah you're going to go. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. I'll be full, there. Yeah, probably. You know, and wait, if somebody calls Saturday? Oh yeah, I've you know I do have a wedding, but it's not for three months. So yeah, you want to hang out next Saturday too? Yeah, you know? <laughs> yeah, and and like from if you're in full time wedding filmmaking, this is anyone who asks me about a Saturday from <laughs> May to October, I say probably not. Yeah, can we do it on another you day? You didn't even check your calendar. Yeah, I just know though. So yeah, it's probably not. I probably can't. You know. And that is a little bit different for you guys. Like I occasionally have a weekend off. I normally do, 
but yeah. the issue is, is like I don't know. I don't know which one it's gonna be. I know? don't know until the month of. Yeah. So, or like right now, I'm I'm trying to plan a a, a cabin trip with some friends. They want to go over a weekend because most of them work, you know, normal jobs. Normal people. Yeah, and like, you know, we like of course, right? Of course, this happens. We we're working through a few different weekends. I'm basically the reason that we can't do any of these weekends so far. We land on, I think it's Labor Day or something like that. Literally an hour and a half later, I get an inquiry for that Saturday. (laughs) And it's not a small amount of money. No, yeah. Like, I don't want to say no to, I mean, I don't know what it'll be. Five grand, six grand, you know, whatever. Like, I, you have, of course, I don't want to say no to that. That's my livelihood. And especially this year, like, weddings are down, you know, for me at least. You have to say yes sometimes. It just is what it is. And it's like, yeah, that is not. I think anybody can do this for one year, two years. Oh, yeah. But the more you do it, the more you're like, well, this kind of is a pretty, like, I'm not saying it's not worth it. Nope. But it's not a heavy price to pay. And emotionally. You just got to be aware of it. Yes. It affects your relationships. It affects what yep. you're able to do. It affects um, every part of your life becomes centered around trying to jam stuff in from yeah. 6 o'clock to midnight from monday to friday and not and and not spend any of your saturday (laughs) and it's like it's just how it is and it's like for you as a person if you're sitting there like should i go full time or should i quit my day job and i would say Mm -hmm. hey don't quit your day job if when you think about your life you can't imagine it without the social life you currently have yeah it will change so i think one of the things is you have to be and this is something that i've kind of lean into maybe more recently and I didn't do well for a long time. It's like, you have to be a lot more intentional with those relationships Mm -hmm. because you know, I have friends who I see pretty often. The ones I see the most are self-employed. The ones I see the most, I can call up on a Tuesday afternoon and go for a run, right? The ones who work in nine to five and have weekends off. I mean, I'll see them more in the winter months, but during the summer, I don't see them a lot unless I'm really intentional about that. Unless I say, Hey, I do have this random Saturday off. Let's hang out. Yep. You know, um, it's, you know, it's, so when you have kids too, it's even, Oh another yeah. Level. I can't imagine. It's yeah. enough, and I think it really does. Like, I do want to say this just because you're a full-time wedding filmmaker, if you're thinking about doing it, I don't think you have to have no boundaries. Like, I think it's fine to say like, cause I do this almost every summer, Bobby. I'm like, I'm not working this Saturday. Do not yeah. schedule me. Whatever happens. The answer is no. I've what? had that. Unless yeah, it's like I've over 12 like, grand or some crazy yeah, yeah. wedding where I might be like, tell me about something crazy because if there's enough money involved, then I can, yeah. I have money. Everybody has it. a price. Everybody has a price. But in general, it's like, hey, I'm probably not going to be doing anything. This is, I'm going to be going here. With, like, you still need to yeah. do that stuff. Yeah, it's, that's important. It's not going to all consume your life, um, but it will. I think it's just the emotional pressure though. I, it, it's It's interesting because it's, People are like, oh, I need more time off. I don't think most wedding filmmakers don't get enough time off. I think I would I would have kind of a counterpoint to that, but I want you to finish here. I think what they don't do is they're they're not comp like their time off is like all this weird time where everyone else is working. Yeah. So like that's true. They're not processing like actually you had tons of time off, but it was like weird solo time yeah, by yourself. From like eight and, eight a.m. to one p.m. Yeah. and nobody could hang out, and you're, you're not just, gonna go to a bar. Like what are you gonna do? Sit on your couch? You yeah, know, your kids are at school. Like, yeah, all the things that you. So like what it is is you actually become a weird, like it's like you're a bartender or like a stripper or something. Like you yeah. have this like lifestyle or a pizza delivery man. Let yeah. me tell you. <laughs> Or you have this lifestyle that doesn't connect with the people in your life yeah. and it pulls you out of relationships and you have to work much harder. And for some of you guys, that's not going to be good for your mental health. It's not going to be good for your relationships. Going full time might not be worth it. Yeah. So I have one counter counter thing that I would like to say, you know, you said, you know, you think people do get time off and I agree with that. You know, I agree with, with the assessment that it is. I think every now and then we can say, Hey, I am not working this weekend. I don't care unless it's, you know, 20 grand or something. But for the most part, I'm not working this weekend, but we do get a lot of random odd hours off. Mm -hmm. But, but I would also say, you know, I get, I have this conversation with friends a lot, right? Because I'll, I'll text them at, you know, 10 30 AM and be like, Hey, sorry, I missed your call. I just woke up. And they're like, I hate you. Like you get to sleep in or something. Right. Um, 
and I don't have kids, so that makes a difference in that. But like, I also feel like, yes, there are absolutely pros, just like there are cons, but like, do I get time off? Yes, there is time where I am not editing or doing emails or whatever, but my brain is on the clock 24 seven. Like, I can't tell you the last time where I have taken like a vacation where I'm fully on vacation. Oh yeah. Like if I get if I get an email, I'm like an inquiry, I'm responding to that inquiry within a few hours. And it doesn't matter if I'm on vacation or like my brain is always working for me, which is good for my business and sometimes terrible for my personal well being or something. You know what I mean? And that's that emotional investment that you get to when you're full time. Yeah, if you don't like feeling stressed about <laughs> this job, going full-time is the worst decision you could ever make. Now, I do think there are other, we'll talk about in the next episode. Because if you're listening to this, we're gonna do another episode of why you should go full-time. And I think one of the benefits of going full-time is if you are really stressed because you literally just don't have time to do the job of being your wed a wedding filmmaker and running the business, going full-time might relieve some of that stress in terms of like just time. So the time thing I think isn't the real issue. I think the issue is like because you're dependent on the money because there's ego involved and like it's you now it's like it's your you probably told people you're quitting your job and you don't want to look like a loser yeah. like all this stuff that goes into it emotional things relational things because of that like you said you're always on yeah you're always on I don't really I'm not a person that finds it like stressful or actually I enjoy when I go on vacation sitting down and doing a little bit of emails like, yeah, that's like, like honestly, way. like, that's like maybe my, like, that might be like kind of my vacation there. Yeah. <laughs> like, I'm not somebody who likes to just sit still forever and lay on a beach. Like, I I was in Jamaica for a wedding, actually, but turn it into like a longer shoot in or a longer trip, vacation, <laughs> whatever. And I'm there and I'm like, ah, I kind of want to just take a break and go do emails. Because the thing is that I know if I have inquiries where I have stuff I need to attend to, or that might, honestly, what might cost me money, right? I don't respond to an inquiry in time, they book somebody else, whatever. Like, I can't enjoy my day or my vacation or whatever, knowing that. Like, that's gonna be in the back of my head and it's gonna just drive me nuts until I take care of it. That's an interesting thing because it's like, I haven't really ever, I've always run my business like I was full-time. Yeah. And so I, I don't want to say that people who aren't full-time exper don't experience this. And so this is why like I would say probably many of you should go down that journey because if you're sitting there and you're like, this is how I feel already, except I have to do another job too, right? Like I'm literally can't focus and I have another job, you know, um, if that's where you are, maybe it's time to go full time. But like, I do imagine that there are some people who like, they just, they're shooting 10 weddings a year. They mm -hmm. love it. It's a, it's a lot of fun. They're not having to hustle too much to get the leads they're getting. And they're not feeling super yeah. ton of pressure. It's comfortable. It feels yeah. good. Everything about the wedding filmmaking. Like I'm sure there are people shooting 10 weddings a year, making 40 grand. And yeah. like, they're not having to, do much to get it they're not investing in their marketing they're just kind of doing it and whatever comes in comes in and that's great and if you're in a place where you're just like everything about it is working and you're super happy with the art you're making and the money you're making on the side is awesome like you yeah. could be having a hundred thousand dollar job and making an extra 40 and like if that's where you're at and when i start saying like do you want to risk all that money plus add a bunch of stress to it? You're like, yeah. oh wait, no, I don't really want to do that. Well, that's I a legitimate that's, reason not to become a wedding filmmaker. That's the thing is like, if you if you have another job, you can live off that salary, you enjoy that job. I think that's important too. That is important. It brings you joy in some way. And you are doing 10 weddings, making 40 grand. You, you basically, you can find yourself in this position that's really important to acknowledge, which is, <laughs> The wedding filmmaking is not about the money for you. And that's a pretty nice spot to be. And what it allows you to do is it allows it to be fully 100% about the art. 
And that is why most of us get into it. Or just that fun what, in general. Cause like, maybe, just, yeah, I guess maybe yeah, you're not maybe thinking you through like doing emails. I don't know, but maybe you barely do the emails. Maybe you do a sucky job with all that crap and you still book yeah. 10 weddings. Like, yeah. Like maybe you're just good and you like having 40 grand. You're paying for your kids for like college. Yeah. It can be for, because of extra money, but it's I'm just saying fun. like, I think it's one of the unique scenarios until you get later in your career where you can where you can actually in the beginning stages, which many people can't do is make it about what you create only mm -hmm. and create what you want. I think a lot of people early on and then a lot of people too in the middle stages of that career until you get later, charge a higher price, dial in your look, have people come to you because they like what you're making, whatever. You know, a lot of people find themselves in this situation where you, it is about making art it is about creating what you want, but there's some amount of leaning into what the client wants, booking a wedding that you're not maybe that excited about. You know, there is, when you're full time, there is this, um, it's business. sometimes, yeah, it, it, there is a business side of it where it's not, it can't be fully, I want to create this. Uh, I would sometimes. say one out of four to five times a year, my thought is, oh, I want to really, I have this great idea for this wedding. Yep. Every it's the right other couple, time. it's the right venue, it's whatever. Yeah. And maybe that's, you come with experience. It's so like initially, you know, this is not possible. Like, yep. I know what I want to make and I can't. Right. Yeah. You can't do, the couple is not like into each other. The day is very tight or stressful. The location yeah. sucks. Who knows? Could be anything. Very rarely do I think about anything but. I am showing up and doing my job. I want these people to be happy customers, enjoy their experience with me and pay their bill. Yep. And I don't want this to take too long to edit the end. Yeah. Like, yeah. and I'm fine with that. Like that. It doesn't cause and me. It doesn't mean, yeah, any it doesn't negative mean you're doing a, making a bad product. No. And it, it doesn't make me less satisfied. Yep. I'm, I'm satisfied because I make money. So like, I'm, yeah. I'm happy with a couple of times but, as a professional artist for many years in my life, I've done art that I didn't get paid for and I really didn't like it. Yeah. 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 <laughs> like now I get to do things where every once in a while, like, and this is being mature, by the way, like I think yeah. immaturity is thinking everything should be satisfying. That is the yeah. definition of immaturity. Every meal should be like my, my kid thinks every meal should be donuts. It's like, no. Have you Some, tried it though? I mean, I don't know. <laughs> Some meals are just going to be good for you and they're going to sustain yeah. you. And then you get to have dessert. And like, that's part of what makes that, dessert extra delicious and i think exactly. the same thing comes with art is like moderation and like you sometimes you just got to do a job and then you get these things and if you stick with it long enough you'll kind of learn to identify them that will inspire you and it'll be yeah. awesome and if that sounds great to you then maybe it's time to go full time but if you literally are like i really and i know people like this like if a couple calls them who aren't their vibe like shooting with them feels like they're being punished for something yeah that's not how I feel, but that's how some people feel. Like it could, I, I think, you know, there, yeah, there are people where it's like, if, if it is a, a really stressful wedding or the, yeah, the couple is just not super into each other. Like we've all been there. It doesn't mean they don't love each other. It doesn't mean they shouldn't be married. They're just it not doesn't photograph publicly well. affectionate or whatever. Yeah. Like, yeah, that they feel like they're being punished. I mean, that could be, those could be something where they're like, I just, I want to quit weddings. Yeah. Like that's how much it can impact people. Mm -hmm. Um, the other side that maybe, so I've, I've refunded two things this year. Mm -hmm. One of them because we missed a delivery date on a teaser. And one of them because a live stream didn't go well and I wasn't happy with them paying for it. It just, yeah. I was just like, yeah, didn't yeah. feel right. Yeah. And so live stream is hard, but whatever. Yeah. Um, one of the people were like, yeah, sure. Cool. The other person literally emails us still like every week about some other thing about this st stupid live stream. They had all these, <laughs> they literally had three other f videographers there by the way. So we couldn't even see anything. That's weird. There was things about it that weren't our fault, but, yeah, yeah. but, it, but I'm not going to go and I'm just going to be professional. Right. Yep, and I yep. just have to keep sucking it up. I had to give them like two grand back. Yeah. And, I'm also have to deal with the stress of this lady. I had to call my lawyer, make them sign 
a non-defamatory agreement, if we gave them the money back, all this junk. If that sounds like hell to you, yeah. it sounds like, like it's then not stay fun. stay part-time doing the weddings that you love with the couples that you love. Like, I mean, I, don't you think that's kind of what it boils down to is like, look, if you want to just shoot weddings, don't quit your day job. If you don't want to run a business, an actual, like, you don't get to be like, oh, I'm a business. Like, you either are a business or you aren't, right? And if you don't want to do that, if that does not sound fun to you, if stuff like that, like accounting, like all these, all these things, emails, all these things that aren't creative doesn't sound fun to you, full-time might not be the, like, light at the end of the tunnel. It might not be what you should be working towards. I think there's another reason why you wouldn't want to quit your day job. And I, and I think it really comes down to the fact that now there's more resources than ever to actually support your business that aren't you, that you can mm -hmm. build into your sales. Like you might be more, you might make way more money and do just as good of a job and not have to do any of the stuff you don't like. If you're willing to build into your business, like your wedding business, um, the cost to have other people do it for you. You yep. don't necessarily need to edit a single wedding film. You don't need to yeah. do any of your accounting. You can have lawyers handle these things for you. You can hire a virtual assistant. You can like, you can literally just show up and only shoot weddings. Yeah. If that's what you love. There I mean, is here's a, a here's business another model for that. Take of that too is, Hey, if you're like, like I, we kind of talked about this, I think in another podcast, like some people are shooters. Some people are editors. Some people are both. But like, I, I identify more as a shooter, right? Um, I can edit, I've edited hundreds of wedding films and they've turned out great, but I enjoy shooting more, I guess is what I would say. Well, it's like, where do you feel at home? Yeah, exactly. So, you know, there's always another option too, which is, hey, can I, I mean, there's multiple, can I partner up with somebody else mm -hmm. who likes handling the business side of stuff, who likes doing the editing? Or could I just be a lifelong second shooter? Like there's nothing wrong with that. If you just want to show up, be creative for eight hours, 10 hours, get your fill of, you know, people and social and shoot and whatever, and get paid 500 bucks, 800 bucks, whatever, or, you know, be a lead shooter, get paid $1,200, whatever. I don't know, whatever it is. Like that is an absolutely like, there is nothing wrong with that. And you might get fulfilled in that way. The, the way. It's never been easier to outsource. Yeah. It's a legitimate, like you could literally shoot. We have an editing studio and we have mm -hmm. several wedding filmmakers who are very good. Some people might know who don't edit any of their wedding films. Yeah. And they're still I good. edit some of mine. Yeah. Yeah. Of mine. They might edit like four or five of them. The yeah. ones that they want to release in market and so they have all the free they've added their free time back some of them i know just do some other things financially yeah um they might want to do commercial you know yeah. who knows like you it's never been easier or better to there's a whole entire industry now there to support you in your venture of not quitting your day job <laughs> like yeah you can keep your day job outsource all your edits you literally, maybe you talk to your clients, maybe you go to some networking events, pay for a little marketing, but, but like, other than that, you, you might not even have to answer emails. And you know, that could actually be that solution. So if you're at that point, and we're gonna talk about this in the next you know, podcast about, about reasons to go full-time of, you know, one of those reasons could be, hey, I'm at my day job, maybe I like it, maybe I don't, but I'm out of time, right? I'm feeling that stress. I'm feeling I'm hitting that ceiling. I've grown to this point. I can't grow further because I don't have the time. You know, a very viable path to take is outsourcing your edits, outsourcing accounting. Like there are things to outsource. And I think that too has this negative connotation like, oh, nobody can edit like I can, which for 99.9% .9 of people, like I'm sorry, brutal honesty time. That's not true. Well, it's you know? like, do you think somebody with three kids screaming who's getting home at <laughs> six and editing for two yeah. hours, picking it up? And there it are down? a very select few people who I think that does apply to. And even some of those people can still outsource some parts, right? So yes. if you are feeling that pressure, the, the next step might not be quit my day job 
and go full time. The next step might be, all right, let's let's work smarter within my business and keep my day job. There's no right or, or wrong. You know, neither of those is is 100% the right way for everybody. Well, or the, the key is way, like but. the only solution for your problem of I don't have time, I need to quit my day job is no longer I have to quit my day job. Yeah. Like, there didn't used to be these resources. Yeah. Now you can be like, oh, I have no longer have time. I'm going to raise my prices 500 bucks and I'm going to outsource my edits. I'm going to find an editing partner, Easy. like no backlog or someone like yeah. that. And I'm going to send my edits there. And, and that's going to be that. By the way, side note, <laughs> all these editing studios, if you want to get your edits done by December, like you need to start submitting your edits right now. This year is crazy. I'm hearing like 40 to Get 100% now. more volume. You need to submit your edits now. Like yeah. with our editing studio, I'm telling people like, I need your schedule at the beginning of the season. Like, <laughs> yeah. but that's a side note. These people exist and they can do a great job and you don't need to just quit your job. You can keep that salary and instead of just you know, maybe you want to go, oh, well, I just can't take any more weddings. So they can't hand handle any more editing. Yeah. You know, well, no, if you, you could take five more weddings, you didn't have to do any of the editing and that would add a lot yeah. more revenue. And the other thing too, is you don't have to outsource, you know, Every I think if you outsource edit. accounting, you're kind of outsourcing accounting, but editing, you can pick and choose, right? Yep. You can say, Hey, I want to outsource <laughs> half my edits or, you know, these three, these next three weddings, I think I'm going to outsource them. But this one, it's a destination wedding. Like, I definitely want to be a part of that start to finish. I'm going to edit that one. I would think most people really only only need to edit if they if they are a great editor who actually brings something to the table. Um, unless people are paying a certain price where it's like, I am expecting Alex Douglas to edit my film, right? Most people only need to really edit to keep their brand voice alive, maybe 20% of their films. I, I think, or in maybe even just teasers, to be honest, like, but I think, I think ultimately like you aren't as essential to your business as you think probably. And it's never been easier. That and should maybe be its own podcast. <laughs> you aren't as been, essential to your business as you think. Well, I mean, we always say irreplaceable. <laughs> it's person true syndrome. though. Like it just is. And like, you know, you mentioned that like, you know, maybe you only have to edit your teasers or 20% of your weddings or something. I don't even know that you have to do all that. Like I would almost say you might only have to edit truly what you're marketing. Yeah, that's what I mean. You I know? bet you're only shoot. I, like I, how I many did... teasers do I market hardcore? Three, four, five a year? That's how many I... weddings? Most people I see Not a lot, are know? only marketing five. If they do 20, only five of them are heavily marketed. Yeah, exactly. And like, think about, I'm thinking about what lives on my website right now. My two first films that you see on my website, one of them is three years old and one of them is a year and a half or two years or something like that. So like, you know, you can get longevity out of like, I still think those are great wedding films. I still think they are attracting the clients that I want to attract. And, you know, I, I've thought about replacing them with a film from this year, or last year, or whatever, but like, those still are my heavily marketed films. You we know? have shot since May, I think, 60, 70 weddings. Yeah. We have released one, two, three, four, five. <laughs> that sounds about right for me. That's too. what it is. I mean, like, not that's those how numbers, it is. but that's kind of how I operate. You, so. you know, we like that's how a lot of people operate. And it's like, yeah. because we're like, well, this, you know, you show what you want to grow type thing. And not to say our yep. other couples aren't amazing. It's just no, like, no, no. You know, we, we, you know, we have a certain, and we don't want to overwhelm and we have a certain thing we want to communicate. We have a brand voice yep. and like, that's, what's important. And you know, you're thinking like a business owner, but I don't think you have to be, you don't have to quit your day job. You can yep. keep this other source of income and still run your business. And I think this is the number one reason I think not to quit your day job. Cause the other things are like, you might still be experiencing the stress, even though you have a day yeah. job, you might still be experiencing some of the repercussions and the emotional problems and you might still be running into the time issues. You might still have all the same issues with your day job. Yep. This issue right here of like being able to just calmly make less profit off your business and not have to replace it, mm -hmm. you know, or by replacing it, you just say, oh, and I'll just shoot four more weddings. 
Yeah. But I've already, but I've freed up tons more time because I'm not doing that is unique to a bivocational person. And it's a great perk. And it's something I would deeply consider before you made the switch. If, if I say to you, like, could you spend $600 per wedding and have people handle everything for you and then shoot a little bit more? Would you be more profitable if you kept your other job? And you're like, yeah, I actually would be, you yeah. know, unless you, the other answer is, but I'm miserable. You know, yeah. if you're miserable, you hate your job. It makes you want to kill yourself. You hate the job so much. You want to just get out and you would give anything. You would, you would, you would make half as much. Like if you're like, I, I would make half as much money if I just didn't have to do anything but wedding filmmaking. That's a different discussion. Yeah. You know, but I would say the last reason not to quit your day job is don't quit your day job just because you feel pressured by other wedding filmmakers to quit your day job. Yeah. That's a terrible reason. It's, I think we kind of hit on that in the very beginning. Uh, there is this pride thing. There is this like, you know, I'm full time. I look down on you if you're not full time. Um, and it's, you know, it's silly. It doesn't, it look, nobody knows. I like, I mean, shoot, we, we run wedding film school together. I don't know your personal situation. I mean, I know personal details about you, but I don't know what's best for you. No. Like that, that's ridiculous. So, well, and you, know. and you also, people lie all the time. Oh yeah. Oh my So gosh. like, <laughs> yeah, I booked this wedding for uh, 8,000. And then like a week later, so yeah, I booked this wedding for 9,000. And like, it just keeps Somebody going. Was, it's a tall tale. Yeah. Telling you like, oh yeah, I'm doing this. I'm doing that. Like talk is cheap. Show me yeah. the receipts, you know? Yeah. And they're not gonna. Show me the expenses. <laughs> yeah. They're not gonna. And that's okay. Cause it's yeah. none of your business either. Yeah, yeah, but, it doesn't but you certainly should not be making decisions based on the fact that other people made you feel inferior. Yeah. And I would just like, until I don't think you should quit your day job until you can make sure you've cast aside the thought that you're doing it for the wrong reasons until you're, if you have any thought in your mind, like, Oh, what do people think about me mm -hmm. when you're making a decision to go full time, rando people on Facebook, some people on Facebook, by the way, are my real friends. Most people on Facebook, they're like, oh, you're really curt. You're really short on Facebook. I'm like, oh, I don't know these freaking people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, what do I care what they think? You know, and it's like, ultimately, why do you care when anybody in that isn't your friends and family who has a direct correlation with your life? What do you care what they think about you? Don't make a decision yeah. about becoming a full-time artist without cast making sure you can overcome that because you'll make a lot of bad decisions going forward if, if that's – part of your decision tree. I agree. So I've got, I've got one more. Yep. Now we kind of, I think we kind of like beat around this, but never directly said it. So I do want to make sure to directly say it. Cause this is a really, this has been an important thing, a important part of my like mindset and thing that I've really acknowledged in the last, you know, five to seven years. And we talked about this briefly on the phone uh, when we were, you know, kind of going through the yeah believe the, it or not we try to plan this stuff we actually do work i mean we might sit down forget everything we talked about and ramble for an hour but uh we do pre-plan some of this uh and this is a big one for me is like when when you go full time and you take on those pressures we talked about everybody gets into this because they love creating they love making videos they love cameras you know whatever when this becomes your full-time job it is very very hard to keep that passion that love for what you're doing and and the way that i best exemplify this and you know you can you can be fulfilled through things you get hired for but i remember asking you and you can ask me and we can say our answer at the same time which is when was the last time you picked up your camera and you shot something for fun for free? And I can't remember the last time. I, I don't know that I've ever. Well, no, I used to make fun, tons of skits all the time. Yeah, exactly. Like, I, I would always do like random stuff, fun stuff like that. But like maybe 10 years. Yeah, exactly. And there's nothing wrong with that. It's just like know that that is a cost 
Know yeah. that if if right now in your life, pre-shooting weddings, you're thinking about shooting weddings more frequently, or maybe you've done a couple, whatever, know that if that is something that brings you joy, right? If I love shooting video, it doesn't have to be wedding specific. I just love doing video work. When that becomes your career, you probably are not gonna love it as much. You are gonna have to fill that with something else. Yeah, I think, I've always said it this way, when you, when it gets boring, you're probably good, yeah. you know? And so I think anything, the joy is a lot of times discovery and learning. And so some people think, oh, I'm full time. And it's like, well, that's not really why it's boring to you. It's just boring because you're so good. You don't have to think through all the challenges. It's not challenging yeah. anymore. It's easy. Yeah. You know, that's part of the thing. And then like, you got to challenge yourself, I think. You yes. Put in yeah. Some challenges. But, I, but so this would be my take on that. Yes. The pure joy of discovery goes away in some ways. Like, oh, picking up your camera and saying, what's going to happen now? Right. Yeah. That was fun. Um, I wonder what it would be like if I use this filter, if I did this or it's like, yeah. I know what it's going to be like. I'm not yeah. going to like it or I will like it. The end. I don't think though, the joy of challenging yourself as an artist ever goes away. If you just don't, if you can expand your thinking a little bit and stop being linear. I think you can still be challenged as an artist. Absolutely. Yes. But I think it's Even a in different filmmaking. Like different you could thing. go like, okay, I'm acknowledging right now that it's becoming boring. Mm -hmm. I'm acknowledging right now that it's not inspiring me and like having that thought and then saying, and I think you brought this up on the phone, like either is there something else in my life that I can do that will fulfill me in this way? Cause you got to scratch that itch. I do believe yep. that. Or is there something I can do in my career to challenge myself to do something new? This is the number one reason we decided to start a luxury brand. Yeah, definitely. Because I was like, well, I want to do something that I'm not sure I can do. I'm not sure if I can sell this to these planners. I'm not sure if I can make a film that is up to par. I'm not sure that we can do something unique. But like, we're not using cine lenses because they're inherently better. They are better. But <laughs> yeah, they are inherently better, but. Uh, but they're not yeah. inherently more effective at shooting wedding films. Yeah, yeah. Um, we're just doing it because it's hard and it's fun. Yeah. And it's we, a wanted challenge. To, we wanted to try something challenging. And so I, I think there is always a place, but like, you got to know that like whatever you're doing today will cease to be challenging eventually. And it will cease to give you as much joy. I think it's yep. a natural progression as an artist. Like you look yeah, at Picasso I think so and too. all these things, but if you've never been full time, you probably don't know. You've never had so. that experience of getting bored with yeah. art, but yep. I get bored with art all the time. Yeah. Like now I'm like, oh, I don't want to learn. I used to like, I've, I've been a graphic designer. I've been a web designer. I've done print design. I've actually dabbled with signage and architecture design. And I've done a couple buildings. Like if I get bored, I try a new thing. Yeah. So I just try it and try and try it. And like some things work and some things don't work. Some things work, but I'm like, I don't want to do that anymore. It, it wasn't, it was too hard or too easy yeah. or whatever it was. I think you as an artist, that's, still a part of your journey, but it's going to change. And like, you'll cease to find wedding filming. I think you're exactly right. Actually. You're like it will change your relationship with the art yep. that you make in a exactly. big way. It really, will. I think that's, yeah, I think that's, and it's just, it's just one of those things. It's important to be mindful of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If you could, so. if you, if you like, when you think about that, if you think about like the romance going out of the relationship yeah. and it just kills you inside and you are like, I could never pivot. I could never change. Um, I think you should grow up a little bit. I think you should mature, <laughs> but I also think maybe you're not ready at this time. Yeah. And it doesn't mean never. It just means maybe right now, maybe right. next year, maybe five years. I don't know. And that's the other think thing. About it. Don't quit your day job. Cause you can quit your day job later. Yep. <laughs> like, yeah. Keep quit it, it another time. Now. I don't know. <laughs> There's no rush. Like you set your own timeline on this stuff. And yeah. so, and your business will too. And so here, here's the deal guys. Thank you so much for listening to the wedding film school show. Uh, we got a lot of stuff on the channel. Um, wedding filmmaking education, uh, some really cool BTS videos where we actually go through a whole entire wedding day um, and we'll show you how we shoot. And um, But we're going to be talking next episode about you need to quit your day job and yeah, how to opposite. go full time. And really, we're going to break down three ways that you can look at your business, numbers that you can look at, like tangible things that have nothing facts. to do with your opinion, facts that tell you it's probably time or you could sustain going 
full time. Yeah. And I think I haven't really heard people do that. So we're excited because I think we're going to help some people out, do the math and determine, can I, should I go full time financially and as a business, will it work or will this actually hurt me in a severe way? So I'm excited about that one, Bobby. Yeah, it's going to be good. All right, guys, have a great day. Subscribe, do all the YouTube stuff, and of course, do the podcast stuff. Thank you guys for being amazing. Thank you. Thank you. Have a great day.